Well guys, the Nintendo's E3 2018 presentation is just around the corner and you know what that means. My uncle who works at Nintendo is gonna call me and tell me all the new info about the new River Heaven on the Switch. Hello? They're making a Mario Party and Animal Crossing crossover? Nowadays, fake leaks and rumors on the internet are basically a dime a dozen. Whether it's a fake wish list on 4chan or a totally confidential event schedule, but beginning with Arts the Omni's Rayman in Smash 4 leak, people started to realize that given enough effort and time, anyone can make a fake leak. Especially with 3D modeling tools being quite accessible, allowing for the creation of images that can be mistaken as real leaks without a thorough analysis. But the early days of internet leaks have mostly been forgotten. Sure, no one today would believe a cruddy edited photo of Waluigi in Mario 64 DS, but when we were young, of course that might be possible, look at these screenshots! And Nintendo obviously put the black box on the file select screen for a reason. There's no reason, they just they just screwed it up. I don't know. Even if these photos and videos weren't 100% convincing, back then the young minds of the internet didn't completely write off their veracity. Sure, some of these rumors are pretty outlandish, but they often have this mysterious aura surrounding them, as if somehow there's still a very small chance that they could be real no matter how nonsensical. Remember that Photoshop and other editing tools like ROM hacking were not coming back then, so seeing any sort of fake screenshot or video was still a pretty surreal experience. And back then, one of the well-known masters of fake leaks was Pablo Belmont. Huh? You might not have heard of his name, but Pablo Belmont, also known by his username Psycho Freeler, is a Spanish 3D artist and the man behind some of the more elaborate fake leaks and hoaxes you've probably seen on YouTube in its early years. To be honest, looking back at them, they're more conceptual mock-ups than deliberate fakes, but these videos were all created from scratch with 3D models, something very little people, or at least people on the internet, have dabbled in back in the early 2000s. And chances are, if you've been on the internet for a while, you've probably fallen for some of these hoaxes back in the day. So, out of half interest and half nostalgia, I'm going to take a look at these videos, see what outlandish dreams they promised us, and check out some of the behind-the-scenes material and stories. Let's begin. The year was 2005. Speculation was rampant about Nintendo's next home console after the GameCube, and it all hinged around one word, Revolution. A codename that was announced during E3 2004, symbolizing Nintendo's goal with the console, to bring a revolution to video gaming. Late President Satoru Iwata has said that their next system shouldn't only feature better power and graphics like their competition. I suppose I could give you a list of our technical specs, I believe you'd like that, but I won't for a simple reason. They really don't matter. Basically, Revolution was going to be different. It will change the way people interact with games. But how exactly they were going to achieve that remained a mystery. And so came the speculation and mock-ups. It's going to be a futuristic looking GameCube. It's going to have a customizable controller. It's going to be... what the hell? Anyway, here's where Pablo Belmont steps in. He created a fake trailer for a final version of Revolution called Nintendo On, and posted it to a message board in 2005 as a fake leak. That's 13 years ago, just saying. The video begins with a recap of the innovations created by Nintendo's previous consoles and handhelds, including the virtual mode, because why not? Then the transitions to what appears to be the intro to Super Mario 64, until the camera zooms out of the castle grounds and reveals... Answer that, we need to talk about parallel universes. So Mario, and if you thought my other theory was a complicated copy of the original map, okay. and so it's 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 parallel. you can't say it's only a hat. To be honest, I'm not quite sure about the reasoning behind showing this. I guess it's supposed to be a hint at the supposed rendering power of the new system, which would make sense. And then it appears, the Nintendo On, and yup, it's a virtual reality headset. Nearly 10 years before VR actually started to become mainstream, and it comes in different patterns, neat! The gist of it is that the console is divided into two parts, the brain, which is the main console, and the eyes, which is the wearable display. The console itself takes DVDs and features GameCube backwards compatibility, and there's even hints at being able to develop games directly on it. The wearable display contains environment and proximity sensors, and communicates with the console itself to create a virtual environment you can move around in. I don't know though, a part of me thinks that it's not a good idea to play VR Metroid Prime in your cramped bedroom. 
There's also a small tease of a Super Mario 64 remake right at the end, with a kinda creepy looking Mario, but the widespread footage just abruptly cuts there. Apparently, Pablo wanted to include more in-game footage for series such as WarriorWare and Metal Gear, but a hard drive crash caused him to lose most of his work, and the final product was a rushed out recreation. Still, for a fake leak created in 2005, it was very impressive. Nearly all of the 3D models are created from scratch, and many people ended up falling for the leak just from the high quality production values alone. While the features Nintendo on promised to bring were way too ambitious for its time, and ended up not resembling the motion control focused final product at all, it was interesting to see it basically predict the future state of gaming, such as VR gaming becoming a reality and Nintendo finally acknowledging the Virtual Boy exists. These games are great! Yep, you read that right, 2003. Dang, I was 4 years old when this video was made. This video wasn't actually a fake leak as Pablo says directly in the video that this isn't real game footage and it's just a mock-up. Anyway, this appears to be concept footage of an F-Zero game on the GameCube, which leads me to assume that this was made before F-Zero GX was released later that year. The video starts off with a bird landing on the tracks of Mute City and acting generally confused about his surroundings. So confused, in fact, that he doesn't notice a horde of F-Zero racers zooming towards him. A Smash Bros. F-Zero remix starts up and no oh, creepy talking octopus! <laughs> So that voiceover was clearly reversed, and being the curious type that I am, I tried plugging it into Audacity, but I didn't exactly get the best results. It's either gibberish or a foreign language that I don't know. Other than that, though, most of the video is just an animation of F Zero racers racing through Mute City. I would analyze it deeper, but I'm not an F-Zero fan and some of the details might have went over my head. It certainly has aged well for a piece of animation from 2003. If Pablo only released the racing portion as a fake leak, a lot of people probably would have believed that it was a pre-rendered scene from a real game. Oh and by the way, the bird is fine. This one is even older than the F-Zero video. Super Mario's Universe, a GBA game apparently. Ah! That's not a GBA game. So this game is apparently a 2.5D style Mario platformer with a pretty unique art style. I was kinda weirded out by it at first, but I believe the primary source of inspiration for it came from the late N64 era. Heck, Bowser sporting his N64 design, Mario looks notably similar to his appearance in the Super Mario 128 GameCube tech demo, and Peach, uh... The level environments look pretty interesting as well, with designs and enemies clearly inspired by the Yoshi's Island games. While it's a bit too cluttered and messy for my taste, it is pretty funny to see Pablo propose a 2.5D side-scrolling Mario game in 2002, while the ones Nintendo did release in the future... aren't that. I mean, like, what, nearly every other Nintendo franchise with 2D platformers now presents them in 2.5D? Would it really hurt to try reinventing the art style of 2D Mario games again? Oh, uh, anyway. The idea of a 2.5D Mario platformer is indeed pretty tantalizing, but to be honest, I couldn't fathom these kinds of graphics running on a Game Boy Advance. Very few GBA games actually used 3D graphics, and even then, they weren't exactly high quality. I think that if this was spelled as a GameCube title back when it was released instead, more people probably would have fallen for it considering the lack of 2D Mario platformers at that time. Really though Nintendo, make a 2.5D Mario game. 1999? Hold up, wasn't Majora's Mask released in 2000? You mean to tell me that Pablo actually made a fake trailer for an upcoming N64 game? Yeah, give me a moment, I need to process how mind-blowing this is. The video itself though is pretty self-explanatory. It's about what you'd expect from a pre-rendered trailer of a video game. But of course, coming from an indie creator instead of Nintendo themselves, it's still a marvel to look back on, especially the environment and the Terminal Moon itself. The only weird part is Link's design, he looks more like a teenager than a young boy here. Other than that, it's pretty dang ahead of its time, 
dare I say that this looks even better than that Zelda tech demo Nintendo made for the GameCube a year later. Sure, I'm comparing a real-time demo to a pre-rendered video, but considering Pablo's video precedes the GameCube and is made by one guy, I think that's the testament to how ambitious the video was. That said, this video isn't even the most interesting part, but rather the story that followed it, as Majora's Mask became a game that Pablo would later revisit in 2010. He wanted to create a remake of the 1999 video, but in the style of a TV show. In his words, like how it would be if J.J. Abrams, John Lasseter, and Miyamoto collaborated together. He created storyboards for this would-be trailer during his free time at work, then forgot about them until a few years later, when he quit his stressful job while also finding himself obsessed with the rise of VR technology. So he turned his storyboards into a real trailer and released it in 2012. And wow, 13 years of experience does make quite the difference. While the trailer only focuses on Deku Link's encounter with the Happy Mask salesman, the detail in this is just, mmm, sublime. If you're a fan of Majora's Mask, chances are you've probably seen this trailer back when it blew up. Pablo reported that the video has gained more than 6 million views, spread across multiple YouTube re-uploads. The success of the trailer helped Pablo garner some attention during the E3 convention that year, from companies like Unity, Microsoft, and even Nintendo, as well as Palmer Lucky, the creator of the Oculus Rift. Pablo's next step, believe it or not, was to actually attempt to pitch the trailer to Nintendo as the basis for an actual game. He wanted it to be chapter-based and available on both the Wii U and 3DS, so it could be experienced in a 360-degree view or in 3D. It was almost like the experience he envisioned with the Nintendo on hoax all those years ago. He began work on a demo for the Oculus Rift with a number of other people crafting rendering systems and more than 100 character models, and showed it off to Palmer Lucky and Nintendo at Gamescom. However, the demo suffered from some technical issues, and Nintendo told Pablo to look out for a future announcement. And a few months later... Majora's Mask 3D. It was a pretty big blow for Pablo, but he didn't want his work from the past few years to go to waste, so he took what he had made and created another video which also garnered a lot of attention. But a look at the comments section shows that people are all too familiar with Nintendo's habit of shutting down fan projects, so many of them weren't that convinced Pablo's project would end up complete. Despite that, he kept going, eventually coming across a program called Game BCN that helped video game creators finance their own businesses. He pitched a game called Iconic Worlds which would include multiple VR experiences, one of which being the Majora's Mask demo, but it failed to attract enough funding to proceed. Lastly, he showed a new demo to people from Nintendo of Spain during E3 2015. Apparently, they liked it. They even told Pablo that there wouldn't be a lot of legal repercussions due to it being made by fans and for fans. But of course, Nintendo wouldn't be able to help them with their project. And so, despite Pablo's hard work and efforts, the tale of the potential Majora's Mask VR remake came to a tragic end. Most of the people who worked on the project left it due to a lack of financial support, and the whole ordeal left Pablo with mixed feelings. While nowadays he looks back on the project fondly, he doesn't know if he'll ever revisit the idea again. And while some other fan projects related to Majora's Mask have popped up since then, Pablo still hopes that people remember the one video that started his dreams. Well, that was kind of sad. Let's just end things off with another one of Pablo's most well-known leaks, Super Mario Galaxy DS. Ooh, just saying that brings back memories. In hindsight, the idea of a port of Mario Galaxy on the DS is definitely way too far-fetched considering the DS's power and how many compromises had to be made to even get a remake of Mario 64 running on it. But our young minds are gullible, and a lot of people, including me, wanted to believe it at first. Well, until younger me took a look at it, saw the inconsistencies, and made a video saying how it's fake, but uh, you probably didn't have to know about that. Before we take a look at the video itself, I'd like to talk about its origins, since not a lot of people know them. On his website, Pablo mentions that the project began only a few months after the launch of Super Mario Galaxy, and was actually his final project in a design studies class. According to him, the project centered around the creation of a viral video. In other words, a video obtaining at least half a million views? Wow, now I feel bad for every other student that had to take that class. Then again, it might have been more reasonable back then when YouTube was like the Wild West. Any video had a chance of going viral, unlike, you know, nowadays. 
<laughs> While the more widespread YouTube version of the video is blurry off-screen footage, Pablo himself has uploaded a much higher quality version of it since then, which I'll link to in the description. But there are actually minor differences between the two. For example, the off-screen version starts off with... Whatever this is. We then see some footage of Mario Galaxy on the Wii. If by now you're thinking, huh, Mario and Luigi look weird, then you'd be right. Since this was made shortly after Mario Galaxy was released and the Wii was only like a year old, getting models by ripping the game's files was out of the question. So Pablo took pre-release footage of the game as a reference and recreated all the models from scratch. The characters, the environments, all of them. Heck, he even took a planet that's only in the E3 2006 demo of the game and put it in the video so that people would believe that it came from Nintendo itself. That's true dedication right there. While the character models are definitely a bit off from their official counterparts, I doubt a lot of young viewers noticed back in the day, especially when the footage was off-screen. And for being created from scratch, the models actually look decent. Except for the Goombas, I, uh, I don't know what happened there. So anyway, as the video goes on to show, to gain access to the DS version of the game, you have to feed Aluma all of your stars- Wait, no, don't do that, that's my save data! Then we see Mario and Luigi traveling to new planets, including the aforementioned E3 Demo Planet. According to Pablo, amongst the new planets, there's one that resembles the Nintendo On, which serves as a not so subtle signature on its own work, but it's nowhere to be seen in the widespread version of the video. Afterwards, we come across a golden DS light that consumes our plumbers alive, and after a conspicuous loading screen during which I assume your Wii magically shapeshifts into a giant DS- Oh wait a minute, there it is, Super Mario Galaxy on a DS. Now obviously, the idea of a game with this large of a scale being on a DS is absurd, but Pablo did try his best to match the limitations of the DS. The most obvious change is that everyone uses derpy low-poly 3D models with limited animation, which is actually pretty accurate to DS models of that time. Different graphic effects and distant planets are also represented as 2D sprites instead. It honestly looks fantastic for just one guy making all of this from scratch. The fact that you perform a spin by drawing circles on the touchscreen is a weird choice though. I guess some part of the DS's main gimmick has to be used somewhere, though I can't imagine that being ideal for tricky platforming. And local wireless co-op might have been a bit far-fetched as well, seeing as Nintendo has encountered roadblocks that prevented them from implementing full 4-player co-op for Mario 64 DS. We won't even see something similar until 3D World. Other than that though, for something created simply from referencing the original game assets, this is a surprisingly faithful mock-up of what a possible DS port will actually look like, especially for 2007 standards. And going back and revisiting it just makes me appreciate the work that went into it a lot more. I can understand why many people fell for it back then, despite there actually being a deliberate mistake in the trailer itself. At the end, when the game's logo zooms onto the screen, the E in the word Super actually appears flipped for a brief moment. And also, in the off-screen video, a screen at the end states that one power star from the DS game equals 10 Wii points. Dude, can you imagine if Nintendo did this today, just announcing during E3 that a single Power Moon in Odyssey is now worth 1 cent in eShop credit? Oh, and lastly, you might be wondering what Pablo got as his final grade for his school project that racked up more than 1.5 million views and became one of the most infamous fake Nintendo leaks. He got a B plus. By God, he tried. Still though, this project gave him a lot of experience in 3D modeling that eventually paved the way for his work in the games industry. Today, Pablo has done multiple 3D modeling jobs from video game levels to animated characters and even some of his own original work. Well, that was quite the journey we just had, but there you go, a comprehensive look at some of Pablo Belmont's most well-known hoaxes. I hope that more people can appreciate the work that he's put into them, because it basically paved the way for the elaborate leaks that we see today, and also the- Oh snap, my uncle just sent me a full list of Nintendo's E3 announcements, quick, let's go check them out! Oh yeah! Hey yo, I hope you enjoyed this video since I uh, definitely put a lot of time into it. Before we end things off though, I would like to give a great shout out to Stickfab for helping me out with translating some of the Spanish info I researched for this video. Also, I would like to thank all of my Patreon supporters. If you like what you see here, consider supporting me with as little as $1 per month and you'll get access to videos early as well as an exclusive Discord server where we hang out and chat. And since Nintendo's E3 showcase is coming up, patrons also get to check out my reactions to it live and participate for the text chat. 
So if you like the sound of that, consider throwing a little my way. It means a lot to me. Alright, see ya!